there's a little-known heating trick from the Second World War that kept families, soldiers and resistance networks warm when fuel lines collapsed and electricity became, well, pretty unreliable. It wasn't a stove, it wasn't a heater, and it wasn't some military-issued device. It was a candle, but not an ordinary one, mind you. It was a specific wartime candle formula that burned longer, hotter, and more efficiently than anything you'd find in a modern emergency kit. For the first minute, it's worth stepping briefly into the world of the early 1940s to understand why this really mattered. Fuel rationing hit hard. Coal and oil were redirected to military supply chains. Blackouts were common, and electricity in frontline towns was unreliable at best. Civilians and soldiers alike needed heat, and they needed it from something portable, simple, and made from whatever scraps were available. That's where the reinforced tallow wax candle came in, a formula developed out of necessity and refined by people who just couldn't afford to waste a single BTU of heat. The reason this candle formula worked so well is rooted in the materials wartime households actually had access to. Paraffin wax was scarce because it was needed for machinery, waterproofing and military logistics. So families and soldiers supplemented the wax with rendered animal fat, tallow, which was, you know, readily available from kitchens, field rations and butcher scraps. When blended properly, the fat increased burn time, stabilised the flame, and raised the total heat output. But the secret wasn't simply mixing wax and tallow. The real magic was the addition of a thick, slow-burning wick created by braiding multiple strands of cotton and soaking them in a salt water solution before drying. That salt-treated wick produced a hotter flame and reduced soot. When combined with the tallow-rich mixture, the candle burned substantially hotter than a standard paraffin candle and could heat small enclosed spaces efficiently. Soldiers used it to warm dugouts, melt ice from equipment and keep their hands functional during freezing patrols. A practical example from the Eastern Front demonstrates how vital this formula became under brutal conditions. Soviet soldiers dug into frostbitten trenches had little access to heating fuel. They often crafted these candles using tallow from ration meat, small amounts of scavenged wax and cotton cloth ripped from worn-out shirts. A single, palm-sized candle created enough radiant heat to warm a dugout corner dry gloves or thaw frozen water rations. Accounts from winter campaigns mention soldiers placing these candles under simple clay pots or tin cans to create makeshift micro-heaters. This wasn't a luxury. It was survival. In many cases, the temperature lift was the difference between frostbite and functionality. Even behind the lines, civilians in besieged cities used these reinforced candles to heat single rooms when coal deliveries failed. The reason these candles produce more heat than modern survival candles is the way tallow behaves when it burns. Tallow has a higher energy density than paraffin and melts more slowly which means a tallow-rich candle releases heat consistently over a longer period. As the candle burns, it forms a deeper melt pool, and that larger liquid surface produces a broader flame. A broader flame releases more infrared radiation, the type of heat that warms objects and bodies directly rather than just warming air. This was crucial in wartime shelters, trenches and stone-walled rooms where air temperature barely budged, but radiant heat made conditions livable. 
the salt-treated wick amplified this effect by maintaining a stable, upright flame that didn't flicker out under drafts or shifting air pockets caused by wind or movement. Learning how to recreate this forgotten World War II candle formula today is simple, practical and incredibly useful for anyone interested in emergency preparedness or historical self-reliance. Start by gathering wax. Any type works, from paraffin to beeswax to old candle scraps. Supplement it with tallow, which can be purchased or rendered at home by simmering beef or mutton fat until it separates and solidifies. A good field ratio is one part wax to two parts tallow if you're aiming for heat over aesthetics. Melt the wax and tallow together slowly over low heat. While it melts, prepare a wick by braiding three cotton strips together. Soak the braid in a solution of salt and water and let it dry completely. This strengthens the wick chemically and produces a hotter burn. Pour the melted mixture into a metal tin or small jar. Insert the wick and let the candle solidify. The result will be a candle capable of burning for many hours and generating enough heat to warm a small enclosed space. A real-world, modern application of this candle is in grid-down emergencies, cold-weather camping or heating small insulated rooms. For example, people living in cabins often use these candles under inverted clay pots to create controlled microheaters that radiate warmth downward and outward. Someone staying in a tent during winter can use two or three wartime-style candles placed in a safe metal enclosure to raise internal temperatures several degrees. In urban situations, a single candle placed near a reflective metal sheet will push radiant heat back toward the user, just as families in bomb shelters once did. These candles also serve double duty as cooking aids, producing enough heat to warm canned food or melt snow. They store indefinitely, don't rely on fuel imports, and can be made from scraps most households throw away. Another detail often overlooked is how these candles reduce smoke which mattered greatly during wartime blackouts, where visibility and scent could attract unwanted attention. The wick's salt treatment and the balanced wax-to-tallow mixture kept the flame clean enough that soldiers could use them indoors with minimal smoke build-up. Civilians hiding in blackout zones valued this because smoke could escape through cracks and betray their location. Modern versions behave the same way when made correctly, making them ideal for indoor emergency use. The value of this forgotten World War II candle formula today is that it bridges historical ingenuity with practical survival knowledge. It shows how people under extraordinary pressure figured out how to squeeze real heat out of minimal materials. It outperforms many modern emergency candles because it wasn't designed for convenience. It was designed for survival in freezing conditions with no backup options. For serious history buffs and preparedness-minded viewers, this candle represents the kind of practical forgotten knowledge worth bringing back into common use. If you found this guide valuable and want more deep dives into forgotten wartime techniques with real modern applications, make sure you subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video so others can benefit from this knowledge.